How do you find the derivative of a function inside of another function? For example, suppose you have the function x cubed plus 2x squared plus 1 inside of the squared function. Often when students see this and they're asked to find the derivative, they're tempted to do something like just say, well, this is something squared. And so my power rule tells us the power will just come down, the 2 comes in front, and, and then I'm left with 2 times that thing to the first power. But is that correct? Let's think about it a little bit more. This function squared is the same thing as the function x cubed plus 2x squared plus 1 times itself, x cubed plus 2x squared plus 1. So if we want to find the derivative of this function, we need to use the product rule. So we should say by the product rule, this is going to come out to be hold the first, that is leave the first function the same, times the derivative of the second function. The derivative of the second function is 3x squared plus the 2 comes down, 4x and then plus 0. The 1 vanishes because it's a constant. So, so that was hold the first times the derivative of the second plus hold the second x cubed plus 2x squared plus 1 times it by the derivative of the first which is 3x squared plus 4x just as before. That is, we have two copies of the same thing. So we get 2 times x cubed plus 2x squared plus 1 times 3x squared plus 4x. So, so this original guess was wrong. It was close. Originally, all we did was we took the derivative of the outside function. We took the derivative of the outside. But that's not quite enough, because in the final answer, although we have that piece right here, this derivative of the outside, we also have a second piece. And what is that second piece? Well, it's exactly the derivative of the inside. The inside function here, this inside function, has as its derivative just x cubed derivative 3x squared, 2x squared's derivative is 4x, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So this is exactly the derivative of the inside. Okay, let's take this idea and try one more example. Consider the function sine of 2x, and we want to calculate its derivative. Again, if you were just going to do the derivative of the outside function of just the sine, you would get as your answer just cosine of 2x. But just as we saw before, that's not quite enough. One way to figure out what is going on here is to remember sine of 2x is just defined to be 2 sine of x times cosine of x. This is our double angle formula. From our double angle identity, we have that sine of 2x is 2 times sine of x times cosine of x. So when we go and calculate the derivative, we get it's 2 times hold the first, derive the second. So I'm keeping the sine the same, and I'm going to times it by the derivative of cosine, which is minus sine of x. Plus, I'm going to keep the second one the same and derive the first. The derivative of sine is cosine, so I get cosine times cosine. That is, I have as my derivative negative 2 sine squared x plus 2 cosine squared x. But we know from our double angle formula for cosine that cosine of 2x 
is exactly cosine squared minus sine squared. So 2 cosine squared minus 2 sine squared will be just 2 cosine of 2x. Once again, what we got as a result wasn't simply taking the derivative of the outside. If you just thought to take the derivative of the sine, you would think it's just cosine of 2x. So here's the derivative of the outside, the deriv derivative of the outside. But, but there's also this 2 here. So why is there an extra 2? Because there's an inside function. And what does that inside function have as its derivative? Well, the derivative of 2x is just 2. And that's where that 2 came from. That was the derivative of the inside. Derivative of the inside. We're beginning to see a pattern now. Whenever I want to take the derivative of some function inside of a function, some g of x inside of some other function f, what am I going to do? Yes, I'll take the derivative of the outside. I'll leave the inside the same. I took the derivative of the sine to make it cosine. I left the 2x inside the same. But then I need to multiply it by this extra piece. In this case, it was a 2 because that was the derivative of 2x. More generally, it's the derivative of whatever's inside. The derivative of whatever is inside. We call this the chain rule. And in the upcoming videos, we'll justify it a little bit fuller and give some more examples of how to use the chain rule to find the derivative of a function inside of another function. That is how to find the derivative of a composition of two functions.